From a junior employee selling ice to taking a risk on offering a radical proposal to his boss. Well, this is the story of the billion dollar corporation 7-Eleven. The nearly 100 year old convenience store has become so synonymous with Slurpees and Taquitos that simply hearing the term 7-Eleven conjures up images of those foodstuffs. However, 7-Eleven isn't only about food and slushies, it has several stories hidden in its convenience stores. Welcome to Wealthy Mindset, where we explore unique and breathtaking angles from the world of money, economics, personal finance, and investing. But before we dive into it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, click on the bell icon right there so you never miss any of our subsequent videos. It all started in 1927, when John Jefferson Green, an employee at Southland Ice Company, a chain of ice block stores in Oak Cliff, Texas, planned to keep the shop open for 16 hours and 7 days a week, so that customers could keep their perishable food fresh. Customers at John's also began to request for milk and eggs in addition to ice. When John discovered that what his clients actually wanted was efficiency, he suggested to Joe Thompson, one of Southland's proprietors, to enlarge their product choices and offered a proposal to become partners in exchange for a $1,000 investment. Well, Joe did agree, and the two partnered to establish the world's first convenience store. Joe went on to open more stores across Dallas, naming them Totem Stores, since they had a totem pole in front of the stores and consumers basically toted their purchases away. Following that, he proceeded to install and rent gas stations at several of the stores, which led to a surge in revenue until the Great Depression intervened, driving the enterprise into bankruptcy. However, W. W. Overton Jr., a banker, was able to lend a helping hand to save Southland. Shortly after, when the nationwide ban on alcohol was removed, Southland began to recover economically, and totem stores started selling ice-cold beers. Southland was thus able to open 60 totem stores in Dallas and Fort Worth as a result of the increased revenue. Then there's World War II. They became the key ice supplier for the largest army training camp in the United States. Eventually, Southland had stores all throughout Texas that were open 7 days a week from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Around this time, the company named it 7-Eleven to symbolize its commitment to working full-time in order to successfully satisfy consumers. Later, Joe's oldest son, John P., joined Southland's board of directors, and five years later, he was appointed as the vice president of Southland, while his brother, Jer, was chosen as the vice president of 7-Eleven. The company began to develop outlets in the suburbs, helping Southland attain a critical sales threshold of $100 million annually. Joe Thompson, however, died of brain cancer at the age of 60, which was a tragic loss for the entire family. Major changes to 7-Eleven's operations were implemented during the Thompson Brothers administration, such as the extension of the chain's daily hours from 16 to 24 hours. Soon after, 7-Eleven began franchising its stores, expanding across the United States and introducing new items like the Slurpee. Four years later, John P. took over as CEO of Southland and achieved the target he set for Southland of generating $1 billion in annual revenue within 10 years. And here comes another important character in the history of the 7-Eleven stores. Toshifumi Suzuki, a young executive, traveled to the U.S. on behalf of Ito Yokado, one of Japan's biggest supermarket chains. He came across a 7-Eleven store, which piqued his interest, because the concept of a 24-hour convenience store did not exist in Japan. Toshifumi realized the potential of the idea and presented it to his colleagues executives at Ito Yokado, who shared his optimism. Despite being initially refused, Ito Yokado was able to secure a 7-Eleven license agreement with the Thompson Brothers that same year. The agreement gave Ito Yokado entire control of 7-Eleven in Japan, culminating in the formation of a subsidiary company. When compared to its American counterpart, Japan's 7-Eleven was written 7-Eleven, was half the size of the average store, and provided lunchboxes three times a day. 7-Eleven eventually expanded to 3,000 stores across Japan and began offering a medium to pay customer electricity and gas bills in store. Likewise, Southland grew to become one of America's largest retailers and a profitable venture for stockholders. This story, however, goes a different path. 
Fearing a hostile takeover by Samuel Beltsberg, a Canadian investor, the brothers chose to go private, incurring $4 billion in debt and paying $2.05 million to stockholders who filed class action lawsuits. They also had to sell the dairy and ice businesses they originally built, resulting in the layoff of around 2,000 workers. Southland declared bankruptcy again a few years later, making it one of the largest bankruptcy cases in American history. Through a buyout offer of 70% of Southland for $430 million in cash, the Thompsons sought Ito Yokado for cooperation. Ito Yokado agreed and renamed Southland Corporation to 7-Eleven Inc. Ito Yokado evolved 7-Eleven into a high-tech machine with a level of excellence not seen in the United States. In Japan, 7-Eleven is noted for its accessibility and high-quality items. 7-Eleven Japan has added outlets in malls and railway stations, as well as vending machines in businesses, hospitals, and schools, generating almost $42 billion in revenue. Meanwhile, in the United States, 7-Eleven is known for its 24-hour availability, drive through and delivery services. Even though yearly sales in the United States are in the billions, they are still 57% lower than in Japan. 7-Eleven is now the world's largest convenience store chain, with over 78,029 branches in 19 countries, the majority of which are in Japan, and a market capitalization of almost $40 billion. Well, who'd have guessed that a once-declined offer would become a lifesaver for 7-Eleven? If you enjoyed this video, slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the latest business trends and interesting facts. You can also turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our mind-blowing videos. We'll catch you in the next one. Until then, bye!